Here's a peninsula concept. Here's our heights that we discussed. Here's our fellow over here. One way is to divide the peninsula down the middle with a complete vertical background. If you have nothing to deal with in terms of columns or anything to hide like that, you can get two pieces of this formica or other countertop material, glue it back to back, secure it in the bench work, build your hill forms right up to it, run it up high enough that it completely goes above your viewplane, and once again, sand its leading edge to almost a knife edge and put a couple trees in front of it. You won't even see the front edge. It works very, very well. If, for instance, you want to have a track work around the corner using a peninsula as a turnaround, it's a great way to go. Uh, as I said, on the HON3 layout, I didn't even do that. My landforms went up high enough that they got up this far in your view plane, had a bunch of trees in front of them, and you didn't even see the other side. Problem. You're going to look at the back of this valence if there's no divider in between. The only thing I came up with in that case is to paint the back of the valence the same color as the wall, the back seam. When I looked up, I saw the same blue. Of course, you see the bottom line of it, but it's not that bad. If the model making is compelling enough, people won't even be looking. If they're looking at the valence, you blew it already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really nice valence. Yeah, I spent three months on that model. <laughs> so it's not working here. <laughs> so, and these, remember, I can, this height business is obviously one of the monster issues in our whole thing here. And you got to tune it for yourself, and you got to just make a decision somewhere, and then stick with it. <laughs> and so these numbers are written for me. I'm basically six feet tall. My head isn't that much higher than my eyes. The normal people, so okay, it's about the same. Figure it's going to be you know, 60, uh, 68, 59, something like that. In this particular case, you see the lights are supported from the valence. And we'll get into how to make valences in a couple of slides. Here. Could we cycle the slide? Here's the two options for peninsulas, this being the unsupported one I described with the knife edge. Let's say you've got a column that holds up the house above. Not a real good idea to take it out. So <laughs> what you can do is create a valence or um, a backdrop which has the same thickness as the diameter of the column. If you've got a house in which you've got eight by eight square posts, get somebody to replace it with a four inch square steel tube. It'll serve the same purpose and it'll make this whole thing easier. You run your formica or your countertop laminate material out, <coughs> feather it in around the curve of that column, that tube column, and do the same kind of approach to, to making the uh, backdrop. It works quite well. It's like the valence itself. Um, I had a question in, in the first presentation of the clinic, which I thought was a good one, and it was my failure to touch on it. The bottom line of the valence need not be even around the entire space. In fact, in some cases, it may be advantageous that it's not even. We'll talk about that in a second. This, I, I drew it just as a straight line. Let us say that the depth of the valence that we determine is right in a given spot is 26 inches. We need some room for lights. We're going to put the lights right in here, supported from the valence, shining in toward the layout. We want to cover the lights so we would jack up this bottom frame member enough to provide the space for the lights. I put a question mark because you don't know how big the lights are, therefore you'll have to figure that out as you go along. In my case, I'm using a half inch plywood, two pieces, one top, one bottom. I took a um, piece of butcher paper, laid it down on the floor, used a plumb bob <coughs> along the front edge of the layout, made little tick marks, and thereby drew myself a line at the front edge of the layout. Took two places, pieces of plywood, nailed them together, and cut a piece about two and a half inches wide of this curve. Pieces of one by two lumber, pine is good, top and bottom, set this up as a unit. You can then screw it up into the joisting above. If you're in a basement, you have the floor joist. If you're in a grade level room, you have the ceiling joist. Those are the good place to attach your balance. Most of the time in the U.S., they are spaced at 16 inches apart. <coughs> Once you find the first one, you're good to go and you can find all the rest of them. Okay. What to cover the valence with? Uh, in the HON3 layout, when it was finally nearing completion, I ended up using 1 8 inch masonry. I wouldn't use it again. It's heavy and it's a pain to work with. 
I discovered only recently, within the last month and a half, a product that is called Thermoply. And I have the data on the source for it, which I can give you when you've got enough light to write. It is about 330 seconds of an inch thick. It appears to be some sort of resin impregnated paper product of some kind. It's kind of brownish on one side and white on the other. I'm not sure what the makers intend us to use it for, but I, I think it has to do with being put into a wall system as part of an insulation of, of the process. One of my contractors used it to box in for a skylight above a ceiling. We didn't want the light escaping into the rest of the attic. We wanted to direct and reflect the light down. We didn't need to finish it out because it was hidden. They just took a staple gun and blasted this stuff into the framing and did a great job. I grabbed the scrap and said, whoa, what's this stuff? It is very flexible. You can take an eight foot long sheet, just grab it, roll it up in your arms into a tube about that big around. It's very light, yet it's relatively stable. And I, I think, well, I've got nine feet of it up now, and I really like working with it. You can cut it with a, a pair of heavy tin snips. Just cut, you know, draw, draw a mark on it. In order to attach it, what I've gotten is what they call finishing washers. It's a company called Woodworkers Supply is one of many. Woodworkersupply.com on the internet. You can find it. These things are sold in a couple, three different sizes. A screw runs, you can see what it looks like. It's got a little raised area with a cup center. It allows the screw to look good. Nice purchase point on the uh, face of the thermopline material. When it's all in place, you can paint it out the color of your choice. We'll talk about that in a second. And it pretty much hides the screws. Yet, you can still go back, pull the stuff off. What I did on the HON3, and I'm going to do the same thing on this, all the straight sections of valence are easily removable. All the curved sections I did not intend to remove, because they're a little harder to deal with. But that allows me access to get in and service the lights and mess with the fluorescent tube, whatever I need to do. Now let's talk about the color a little bit. Um, many modelers want to, they think, somehow enhance their layout by choosing a color color for the fascia. I recommend against that. What you want to do is not embellish it. You want to lose it. You want to make it go away. My recommendation is a very dark color, but not black. Black is a hard color. It's rude. It's like somebody talking on a cell phone next to you in the movies. You don't want to do that. I'm using an extremely dark greenish brown that's a stock mix out of the color chips for Benjamin Moore. I'm using an absolutely flat, no gloss paint that latex, easily touched up if you bugger it, it doesn't matter. Cheap, you can put it on a brush, put it on a roller, and what it's doing is it's beginning to frame the layout. So here's this dark fascia down below, same color used on the valence up above. And I never got around to it before I demoed out the layout, but I'm going to do it with the ON3. I want to paint the ceiling and the aisles the same color. I want it all to go away, and then what I want to create is a slit. Walk into this room in which you're in nowhere, just like this room is now, you're in nowhere. Imagine if there was a slit, a full length of that wall, 20, 24 inches wide, inside of which was a miniature world, and it moves. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm proposing as a way to present the layout. 